Look at this. Look at this. People actually believe that there is a car floating around out in space. Well, I think it looks so ridiculous and impossible. And you can tell it's real because it looks so fake, honestly. <laughs> like, we'd have way better CGI if it was fake. This is live on the air, okay? I'm gonna zoom in on the Earth in Photoshop. You see the Earth? Okay, I'm gonna go to Image, Adjust, Levels, and I'm gonna bring the levels up. Uh-oh, what is that? Why is there a square box around the Earth? It is Photoshop, but it's it's has to be. It is Photoshop, but it's it's has to be. It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. What truth? That you are a slave, Neo. Like everyone else, you were born into bondage, born into a prison that you cannot smell or taste or touch. A prison for your mind. So let's use this model of the earth and let's enlist the help of a friend. You might know her. Next segment, I'm going to show you how NASA grabs objects in 3D space, rotates them around, manipulates them. They can do this with water, with cloth, anything. And the cool thing about it is we can take what they're doing, what they're seeing with their contact virtual reality augmented lenses and put that on a separate video layer live. Okay, I have a lot of Tim Peak screw-ups, but this one here, the system glitches, the software does not track his hand properly, and Tim slips his hand underneath his other fingers, which is tightly holding onto the mic, which would be impossible. You can tell it's real because it looks so fake, honestly. <laughs> Like, we'd have way better CGI if it was fake. Just another example of NASA faking space. Let's take a look here at this supposed image of Jupiter. Nothing more than CGI fakery. The supposed auroras get at NASA's official website where it states Hubble captures vivid auroras in Jupiter's atmosphere. Here's the problem. The date of June 30th, 2016. Now take a look at this. Another so-called official image of Jupiter. This one's from back in 2014. You see the problem here? Now let's take a closer look at the supposed two images provided from NASA of Jupiter. All the clouds are in the same exact position. Here's a side by side. I mean, people can't see what's taking place here with NASA. Nothing more than fakery. I mean, give me a break. This is, this is a complete insult. You have a brain in your head. like you're in a studio maybe in Omaha Nebraska or something the, the, the shot is so clear is this a hoax are you really in space still <laughs> I don't know we're gonna have to do something for you oh yeah I can do that watch Come this on. is this a hoax are you really in space still
Is this a hoax? Are you really in space, Phil? See the hair? See the hair? Uh, and they just start making stuff up. Yeah. Like that Neil Armstrong guy. Have you seen him on the talk shows? Neil Armstrong? You mean the first man to walk on the moon? Talk about a fish story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man, and they're buying it. Oh, yeah. So um, many times during um, spacewalks outside the International Space Station, we can see air bubbles rising up. Can you touch on how there are air bubbles in space? Um, air, can you be more specific, air bubbles? So yeah, like a lot of times during the footage, the NASA footage, you can see bubbles coming up out of the helmets or kind of from underneath you. Um, how do you explain bubbles in space? Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what you're talking about. You might, there's, now sometimes you get water in the helmet and it comes, it's either, it's either uh, you know, from sweat or from the cooling garments. And um, you know, that's generally what that is. I've never seen any kind of air bubble. Could it, could it be that you're filming in an underwater pool and you're not really out there? Let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain, but you feel it. You felt it your entire life, that there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there, like a splinter in your mind, driving you mad. You're a coward and a liar and a thief. the shuttle Challenger exploded about 74 seconds after takeoff, killing all seven astronauts inside. Or did it? It turns out that six of the seven are still alive and kicking today. Ellison Onizuka claims to be his identical twin brother, Claude. Yeah, I've got an identical twin brother, Claude, too. The Challenger pilot, Mickey Smith, hasn't even bothered changing his name. He's now Professor Michael J. Smith of University of Wisconsin. Now, Krista McAuliffe was a bit of a sneaky one. She was the Challenger payload specialist, quite famous for being a teacher. It turns out during her astronaut days, she was using her middle name, Krista. And now she goes by her first name, Sharon. The Challenger commander, Francis Richard Scobie is now Dick Scobie, which sounds like a rather unpleasant disease. Judith Resnick, the Challenger Mission Specialist, again hasn't even bothered changing her name. She's a professor at Yale Law. And finally, Ronald McNair, another Challenger Mission Specialist, claims to be his identical twin brother, Carl McNair. What are the odds? So there I was, just minding my own business, looking at Google Earth and this big snow-covered monstrosity is staring me in the face like, um, why is that covered in snow? So I keep digging a little bit deeper, and I finally get underneath this cloud cover here, and a few images pop up. And I say, oh, images, what are they? Well, this is what you got, which I'm sure that looks familiar to you, right? Looks just like the pictures they give us of Mars. So I'm just kind of creeping around here and definitely noticing the same kind of 
undulation changes and same kind of rock, same kind of dirt. The only thing that's missing is that nice little red tint that they pay somebody $150,000 a year to put on there. So I'll keep kind of going through here and see if it... What the... Uh... Yeah. So, oh, I got another truck. Oh yeah, it says NASA. What's that say? Mars Project? Mm, I think I found out where Mars is, guys. At some point in the future, we're going to look back and say, how did we do it without space? The kinds of technologies that we're testing out on Space Station are definitely helping us with our goals of going beyond low Earth orbit. Early in the next decade, a set of crewed flights will test and prove the systems required for exploration beyond low Earth orbit. Right now, we only can fly in Earth orbit. That's the farthest that we can go. And this new system that we're building is going to allow us to go beyond and hopefully take humans into the solar system to explore. As we get further away from Earth, we'll pass through the Van Allen belts, an area of dangerous radiation. We must solve these challenges before we send people through this region of space. We must solve these challenges before we send people through this region of space. There's a small problem with going to the moon, and inch by inch, NASA is leaking out that they know that there's a problem there. It's called the Van Allen belts, high radiation belts of charged particles around Earth, and we don't know how to get through them, they say. Well, isn't that interesting, because there sure didn't seem to be a problem back in 1969. The moon landing stopped in 1972 and we haven't been back. We haven't been beyond the Van Allen belts. NASA admitted that it had lost, lost the original footage of man's first steps on the moon. To YouTube and watch a funny thing happened on the way to the moon. It contains newly discovered evidence, which is part of the missing tapes, of outtakes from the first mission to the moon of them falsifying a shot of being halfway to the moon. For NASA to come out and say that all the tapes were erased, I mean, you must, it's incredible. Geraldo, this isn't just one tape. This is rooms of tape labeled Apollo 11 moon landing. Someone had to physically go and erase it. It's very challenging to try to prove we landed on the moon, and it shouldn't be challenging. The tape should be there. There should be plenty of evidence. I mean, it's proof right there. This is an official NASA photo of the first Apollo 11 lunar module landing on the moon. I mean, it's right there. This is proof, man. It's the picture's right there. It's landing on the moon. But the only problem I have with this picture is that it's taken from the moon. <laughs> People who believe they saw the landing on the moon because they heard it on the radio. This is a picture of the INSAT uh, actually being deployed from the uh, spacecraft. Did you see it in the background? There was a guy in the background, man. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. This, you can't deny that that's someone in the background. There is a guy moving in the background. And I'll tell you, just if nothing else, here's why you can tell they're not fake. Just to create the paperwork, 
That amount of paperwork would make faking it prohibitively expensive. No one could afford to generate that much, that much documentation. All of that happened in a little town called York, Maine, across the United States from where we're talking to you right now. Across the United States from where we're talking to you right now. My research of the last year has led me to the conclusion that not even low Earth orbit is possible, that the International Space Station is a hoax, and all manned space travel is fake. First though, let's have a look at the International Space Station. I want to talk about some of the anomalies I see there. For the inside of the International Space Station, there are a couple of zero-gravity tricks that they use to fake it. The first is they have a complete mock-up of the International Space Station built on the inside of an airplane. And that airplane does a bunch of rises and falls. It does an upside-down parabolic trajectory, and that simulates zero-gravity. The other main way they simulate the zero-gravity is with suspension in front of a blue screen. And they use that trick for extended periods of time, for longer than 45 second segments. But they can't move around as much. They can't do the acrobatic flips and rolls in the extended mode. So there's full motion mode where they can fully move around and that's faked in a plane. And then there's suspended or extended mode where they're suspended by wires in front of a blue screen. They don't move around as much, but they can make the scene last for a longer period of time. The extended mode is much quieter than the full motion mode. In full motion mode, you can actually hear the sound of the jet engines, the engines of the airplane. In every single scene of full motion mode, in every segment of the International Space Station, you can hear this loud sound, the sound of jet engines. You could argue that it's the air conditioning Sorry, system. Not even an office air conditioner is that loud. And why is there a loud sound in every segment of the International Space Station? <laughs> Mr. Armstrong, Bart Several, ABC Digital. Wanted to give you the opportunity to swear on the Bible that you walked on the moon. Will you put your left hand on the Bible and swear to God that you walked on the moon? You have $5,000 cash. You can give it to charity if you swear on the Bible that you walked on the moon. Please I have the tape. Charity. That'd be fine. Why don't you I swear won't. to... Why not? Why won't you do it? The Earth supposedly 23.4 degrees on its axis. And that leaves you, of course, the occultic number, again, 66.6 .6 degrees off. Well, Earth is supposedly orbiting around the sun at 66,600 miles an hour.